My dear friends, this is Sumner Healy from thelandpioneer.com. And in this video, we are going to discuss some cheap properties that we have just put up on the website. Now, if you guys have been sticking around for our journey, if you've been watching our videos, you've kind of seen the price point of a lot of our recent listings uptick a little bit. And I know there's a ton of you guys who love cheap land. I love cheap land. So what we're going to do in this video is go over properties that we've got listed that are you know $10,000 and below. Truthfully, most of these are $5,000 and below. Like any property on our website, we've always got flexible, easy owner financing in all of these lots. So we're gonna dive in, we'll review these properties. We've got them uh, all over the country, mainly out of the Southwest. We'll touch on what you can and can't do on the land. We'll kind of touch on why you might be interested in these properties. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to start with Alamosa, Colorado. Now, Alamosa, Colorado, this is a county that's adjacent to Costilla. Some of you land buyers have probably heard of Costilla. Um, in my opinion, Alamosa is a touch nicer than Costilla. Um, and we've seen a pretty big, pretty steady uh, kind of jump in demand in the last two years for land out in this area. So uh, you're going to find a lot of bigger acreage out here, kind of like this property, 40 acres, 36 acres. Um, but we do have some smaller lots out here in the one acre range, part of a subdivision known as Deer Valley Meadows. Now, Deer Valley Meadows is subdivided into three different increments. You've got Deer Valley Meadows, Unit 1, Unit 2, and Unit 3. What a lot of folks that are listing land won't disclose to you is that Unit 3, you cannot drill a well in. So right now, we've exclusively got properties in Unit 2. These properties do allow you to drill a well. Same is true for Unit 1, although we don't have any listings in Unit 1 currently. So Unit 3, because there's that restriction on drilling uh, a well, which has been in litigation for years, so someone's trying to reverse it. We'll see what, you know, what becomes of that. But those properties should be priced accordingly. They should be priced much lower. Rarely are they actually priced lower. So if you're buying land out in the subdivision, that's one thing that you're going to want to look out for. You can see like most of the San Luis Valley, you've got this kind of like flat open sagebrush power lines off in the distance. Unit one and unit two, you're going to have a much better time getting closer to power. Uh, but in most cases, power is going to be a couple blocks away. Most folks that have bought land from us in the subdivision um, end up just kind of going with an off grid setup. It seems to be more common. So uh, let's touch on what you can and can't do out here. So. This land, truthfully, is pretty darn open in terms of what you can get away with out here. No HOA, no POA, obviously no time limits to build out here. Uh, livestock is permitted on the property if you want to have some goats, you want to have some chickens, good spot to do it. Uh, minimum dwelling size, looking at 500 square feet out here. So for you tiny folk, <laughs> tiny home folk, good place to be looking. Uh, I know it's a common question. Uh, so 500 square feet minimum single double wide manufacturer homes all that good stuff are allowed on the property now a common question we get is Sumner if I buy this land uh, how how deep am I gonna have to drill to, to, to get water and truthfully we don't know right like it's gonna range property to property to property we've heard average well depths are 60 to 100 feet in Alamosa County truthfully that seems a little bit low to me based on what I've seen out in Costilla County which is just adjacent um so somewhere in that window, my kind of gut tells me you're probably looking at 150 feet to like 500 or 600 feet to hit water. That's what I would assume. But here's the thing. You're buying a $5,400 property, right? This is cheap, cheap, cheap land. Beautiful land. You got views of Blanca Peak off in the distance. If you're in that price point, it's pretty rare that you're going to go and fork out 10, 12 grand to drill a well. It just doesn't really make sense, right? It's like, uh, you know, buying a, a Honda Civic and putting a Ferrari motor in it. Just doesn't really make a lot of sense. If you're planning on developing and adding value to land via dr drilling well and other improvements, you usually want to start with a better canvas. And what I mean by that is we just see a lot of folks buy this land. They'll go with, you know, a water holding tank and get water delivered. That might cost them 150 bucks a month for, you know, a couple thousand gallons. That's probably going to be your best bet on a property like this. And that's probably going to be your best bet for a lot of these cheaper properties. And so that's just something to be thinking about, right? If you're truly looking to lay sticks and bricks and develop and, and, and build a home on this land and you wanna make large improvements to it, you're gonna to wanna to shoot your shot with the best canvas, the best starting point possible, because in the long run, it's actually gonna save you a lot of money. Anyways, I digress. So 
let's hop on over to Sandoval County in New Mexico. This is just about 50 miles west of good old Albuquerque. Now, this subdivision, pretty wild story. Back in the 1960s, land developer bought up 55,000 acres of land and chopped it up into these five or half acre and one acre increments. I think there are some bigger bigger lots out there, but for the most part, it's all kind of within that size range. Um, so as you can imagine, 55,000 acres, there's a lot of property out here. Um, and because of that huge supply, land is pretty darn cheap out here, right? You've actually, you're, you've got a great location, not far off from Albuquerque, about a you know, 45 minute to an hour drive from Albuquerque, which is pretty darn fantastic when you think about being able to buy a half acre for 2,500 bucks. Now, people have been, um, you know, reading tea leaves and trying to figure out <laughs> when is this land going to appreciate? When is this going to boom, right? It's only natural that Albuquerque is kind of slowly encroach and kind of take over what's known as Rio Rancho States. Maybe, who knows? Maybe this land does appreciate a ton in the next 10, 20, 30 years. Uh, but for now, half acre in New Mexico, 2,500 bucks or 99 down, 124 a month. Pretty sweet deal. Um, so on this land, no HOA, no POA, although of course there's still zoning out here. Uh, you're looking at a, it's very odd, 1,008 square feet as the minimum. Um, I don't know if that was a typo that I read, but very, very odd. So that's a square footage minimum out here. Mobile manufacturer homes are okay. Really biggest restriction you're going to see on this land is no camping, no RV camping, no tent camping, just none of it. Right. Um, so. Bit of a bummer for you folks that want to camp, but for 2500 bucks to be able to get your hands on a half acre out in New Mexico uh, and a really good part of town just outside of Albuquerque, I think there's value in that from potentially just a long term buy and hold. But I also think, um, you know, maybe go through a mobile home out there or what have you. For the most part, utilities are going to be way, 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 way far away from these properties. Um, so you're just not going to see a ton of actual development out there because of it. Uh, what we find more often than not is people just this is one of those things they call private ownership, right? People just like to buy these properties and say, "Hey, I own land." It goes up in a couple of years. Maybe they take their kids out there, show them the land. You know, it's just something to do. It's kind of novel. Uh, this is very rarely is this going to be kind of property that you're going to develop, right? And that kind of goes back to the previous thing that we spoke about with those Alamosa properties. Uh, if you're truly looking to build, I wouldn't start there. Now, let's go to one of my favorite places on the, probably the planet, maybe. <laughs> one of my favorite places in Arizona, at least, uh, Yavapai County, right at the northern end of Yavapai County. We've got a boatload of these kind of one plus to two acre lots um, right outside of Seligman in a little subdivision called Bridge Canyon Estates. Now, why do I love these properties? Uh, first off, kind of like this high desert, high higher elevation type of topography. Um, you've got a lot of really cool flora and fauna out here. A lot of these wood, lots are wooded, which I think is really, really neat. Um, and so typically just to define a wooded, higher elevation uh, property in Arizona, typically you're going to be uh, you know, fetching some serious coin for that, maybe 7,500 bucks to 10,000 bucks per acre. Uh, these lots, not the case. We got them super, super cheap for you guys. Kind of in the $7,500 to $5,500 range. This one's at $85. This one's got a little cabin on it and a little fifth wheel. So this one's priced a bit higher. Uh, so you've got some range here. Now these ones are $5,500. Uh, the reason these are priced at the price that they're priced at <laughs> is because um, now these lots all have legal access, although there is um, a little bit of an off-roading stretch that you need to uh, kind of do to get to the property. So the main roads that were cut in, they also had a road funnel to these lots. They just didn't cut it in. So you can see it here. Here's the main road that's been cut in. You would need to either walk or drive through this, which is not very far at all. 50, 75 feet, something along those lines, but something to be mindful of. So that's why those are priced so low. Um, now let's talk about what you can do out here. And that's one of the reasons that we love these properties is because no minimum square footage, uh, tiny homes welcome, storage containers home, storage container homes, earth ship homes. Like really you can just get away with just about anything out here when it comes to developing. Uh, so a great spot for you guys that are looking to make those kind of 
alternative builds and 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 just experiment right and, and build what you want and not have someone breathing down your neck so out here you're not going to find any hoa no poa obviously no time limit to build um mobiles manufactured homes of course are allowed out here rv camping is allowed um but they do put uh some requirements on how long you can camp out here so 10 days max uh 30 days total for a calendar year you can get an rv permit approved a longer stay um and you just have to call the uh, county planning and zoning office if we got their number there so you can kind of stretch that out and stay longer uh, but 10 day max for consecutive stays 30 days per year total when it comes to that rv camping um so think about and last but not least let's peel back and take a look at these beautiful lots here we've got a handful of two and a half acre properties I believe we've got seven of these left we've sold a few uh these are out in pine and meadows ranch so absolutely gorgeous out here uh, this is in cibola county one of my favorite favorite places in new mexico uh this was at one point was actually part of valencia county they spliced it off split it up and i believe in the 80s cibola county became its own county so very very recently has this become its own established county beautiful out here higher elevation uh you've got you know pinions you got pines ponderosas uh you do have full-time residents out here this is part of pine meadows ranch which is a subdivision uh, there is a poa fee out here at 37 dollars 50 per year most of that really goes towards the road maintenance Roads are pretty good, but at this time of year, you know, when there's snow on the ground, they can get a little bit rough. So something to be thinking about is definitely kind of like a four-wheel drive type setup. You can take a look at the roads here. Um, you just want to make sure that you've got a, a car to handle it. We had some folks go look at it after a big rain, and it did get pretty washed out. So something to think about. Two and a half acres, two ninety nine down, fifty seven hundred cash price, or two ninety nine down, one sixty eight a month. What's beautiful about these properties? No minimum square footage mobiles manufacturer homes good to go um and then rv camping is allowed uh but now here's the thing there, there are restrictions out here right this isn't totally unrestricted land there is a poa in place they do have some ccnrs the weird thing is none of it seems to be enforced i don't know why like if you go through and look at the ccnrs then you go and actually look at the subdivision on google maps you'll see people doing all sorts of things which aren't within those ccnrs uh i've tried reaching out to this to this poa many many times and i just get radio silence so you know kind of a, an interesting situation uh, my hunch is you should still always follow the guidelines but it's up to your own discretion um you know truthfully the guidelines out here are already pretty broad and pretty open for what you can do but you know there are time limits when it comes to camping or rv camping yet i don't see anyone actually following those so something to be mindful of um you know this is the, an ideal spot for like a lot of this cheaper land off-grid living is there power available in the area yeah are you going to run it a mile and a half to the property no just unlikely right so you know solar generator well maybe water holding tank uh, and obviously septic none of these properties really none of the properties that we ever list have sewer so you can always assume septic on these puppies uh annual taxes on really all these properties are you know well under sub 50 dollars annually this one's 29 dollars and 54 cents so super super affordable and like i mentioned we've got a handful of these properties out here uh, that you can go take a look at a lot of them are adjacent so you can always make a bundle if that's something that you're into now i appreciate you guys watching this video i hope this is kind of scratch the itch of cheap land. I know you guys love the cheap stuff. And here it is for you. We got land in Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. If you guys have any questions for me, drop a comment down below. If you guys want to take a look at these properties, I will include the links in the description. Be sure to subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Take care.